what made it so beautiful last night is that the youngsters who were playing pool, at some point they stopped playing pool and they came over with their billiard, uh, with their sticks, and they just sat there and they listened. Now, to keep their attention, that was an amazing thing. But they enjoyed it last night. It was finger snapping, toe tapping. It kept them, you know, in a, in a nice momentum. So if they're exposed to, to that more often, then I think we, we would be in really good shape. Jazz has been a word that has been put on this beautiful music to sell it, to package it, to shrink wrap it, and to distribute it. It's, an, it's not really a word that defines this music. It's like using the word black to describe me. It doesn't describe who I am. I'm an American. It says it right on my passport. I'm an American. It's obvious that when you see my face, I'm chocolate. So it's not, uh, you don't have to say black. You don't have to say jazz. You say it's, it's American music. It's American classical music. And our flutist? I'm Amber. I'm from Gillette, Wyoming. OK. What are you studying? Music education, actually. Music ed? Mm -hmm. OK. On what level? I'm hoping like high school. I'm hoping to teach. Oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, oh, OK. So what are you going to do with that? You're going to be a band direct, high school yeah. band director? Yep. Oh, the best to you, Amber. <laughs> the best. I was a high school band director for four years before I started doing other things. <laughs> yeah. And I, think it, I think you're going to enjoy it. Hopefully. Yeah. At the tender age of 23, I went right into teaching. But as I grew, the education part became and my musicianship blended together. Hmm. So, are you all familiar with the improvisational part of life? How many of you have done improvisational stuff? I've done a little, not successfully. Yeah. Okay. That's a little bit? This is good. We're going to speak with our other voices today. Amber, stand and deliver. One, two, one, two, ah, ah. My instructors, when I was coming up, they would tell me that everyone has their own musical DNA. There is no such thing as all women are alike, all men are alike. Uh, everyone has their own separate way of doing things and saying things and being in a certain way. It's amazing that we, there's 7.5 billion people on the planet, but no two people are alike. Twins are not alike. No two people are alike. So if a person can find their own voice, especially through an inanimate object, where they have to actually think about what they're going to play, then they use this, then this, then it comes out in this inanimate object, that's, that's cousin to magical. Of course, youth, what makes youth so beautiful is that they have time to grow into their their being, if you will. They have time to go into their sound and make a full statement in life. And that is, uh, you know, verbally, musically, uh, in any uh, mode or portal that we can think of. I want to hear what each and every one of you sound like first. I want to hear your voice, your other voice. The sweetest sound that you have, period an abbreviated sweetness that you have that comes from the very depths of your being.
You know what you remind me of? You remind me of days gone by when I heard the clarinet when I was a young child around 1952, 1953. You have a beautiful, beautiful tone. When I was coming up, we had people like Nat King Cole, we had people like Frank Sinatra, Art Tatum, and, and Thelonious Monk, and Miles Davis, and John Coltrane. When you heard them, you knew, you knew who they were because they found their own voice. And this is one of the first things that, as I mentioned earlier, that my instructors would tell me that you have to find your own musical DNA, your own voice. Much hipper. <laughs> you know why? Because it came from you. Thank you, Angel. Yes.